folder structure, IT general resources, projects, grade 12, that I create Bradley question and answer. So the first thing you would do is you would be setting up your database and how it would actually um, connect to that. So I'm just going to call it Q&A, um, the ACCCDB. Now, when you get into that question and answer, you first have to structure your database so your table design is appropriate. So your table design, you would first have a question. I would suggest you literally just give it a question ID with an automatic number. Um, as your primary class, that's not so important, but it does have to have a unique identifier from there. You then actually have the question, um, which I'm assuming could even be a not just a short text, it might be a long text because you might want to have a, a paragraph explaining it, this, that, the next thing. Um, some of you might also want to have an image associated with it. So, for example, your question might be also have a picture associated with it that would need to be blocked there. So, this would be an um, image. Uh, location for example but I'm not sure if I'm going to get into that in this video I'm just scrolling there just to show you some options that you could have in your um, in your your project so I know especially for um, Liam you've got maths so you'll often have a, a picture associated with the question so you would want to have the image location that's there um, the, the other thing that you would want to do is you would also have a, um, a one thing that I've done already wrong is it's bad convention to use casing in some areas, so it might just be better to work with that, just so you know everything small case, because otherwise, uh, if those Microsoft, so it won't actually matter, Microsoft's not case sensitive, um, some people prefer naming like that, but your guys' choice. Uh, the next thing that you want to do, you would want to have a category, so you might want to have a category, and a category could, for example, be uh, sports, music, whatever. So you might want to group it according to category. Just not out of a, a must, but just to help you enter data. And I know um, for Sky, you'll have to do a conversion from one thing to the other. And I'll show you, you directly how to do that because you've already got a lot of yours as text. But to make your life easier, you might want to make a lookup wizard and you'll type the values in. And then you could say that one of the categories is sport. One of the other categories is um, uh, music. Another category is uh, academia. The other one would be computers or whatever. Okay, so you'd go next, uh, finished, and then that would mean when you're viewing your table after you save your table. Now this would be your questions table. Um, you'd then be able to choose a category by just clicking on the drop down and selecting one of them. It would just make your life easier for completing your data and there, uh, making your example data. Um, the next thing you'd want to maybe have is level. So how the difficulty, or uh, let me just put it, call it difficulty then. And here I'm going against my naming again, pad me. Um, and difficulty would be a numerical value that we would work with. Now, that's this done, and you could add different questions in here. So I'm just going to add one question. Give me a question. Massively, what's the largest river in Africa? Largest? River in Africa. Okay. Now, um, Image location. Ironically, I find it funny that you chose me the one way I don't have a category for. Let me just say academia. <laughs> and I didn't hear what Mitchell said, but yeah. Um, sorry? Uh, yeah, cool. And the difficulty would be level one because it's basic. Um, and then you would now go and you would create another one, uh, another table design. And here you would create your answer. Again, I would suggest you create an answer ID. I'm now changing naming conventions again. It's fine. I'll stick with my old naming conventions. I'm used to them. I like them. Um, uh, answer ID primary key. You would then give it the actual answer. Um, so short text. You could then also, you could potentially, if you wanted to, also associate a character. I wouldn't even associate a character with it because you want to randomly position it. So for if you want to have you want to put A B C D, you don't want always it to be in the same order. You want it so it'll work. Uh, we've randomly shuffle the answers. So the first time you see the test, the answers might not be in the same order. If the question pops up again, it might not be in the same order. Uh, so you want it to be a random order of the answers. But then there'll be a correct, um, uh, 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 one called correct, and correct would be a yes no field, which means that is it correct yes or no to the answer. And the other thing, the big important one that would have is it would have a question FK. So it'll be a foreign key referring to the question. Again, to make your life easier for completing yours, what you'll do is you'll look it up from another table and you look up from your... So here you're basically creating a relationship. And when I say look up question ID, um, you might also want... Uh, Hi. Where would I find the robotics 
that's in the, the habit down at the bottom of the Guys, that's awesome. What are you gangsters? Um, Does the video record that? Yes. So yeah. video. <laughs> anyway, uh, ironically, I didn't. The question, uh, well, why is the question actual question? What is the question field called? I'm going mad. Okay, let me cancel this. Questions, question. So why didn't that pop up as an option? Freaky. Um, so yeah, question's not an option there. That's freaky. I, I think maybe the problem is because I've called it the same name as a database, or maybe because it's a reserved word. So let me just call it actual question. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, save table. Whatever. Okay, um, close this. Maybe because it was open. Let's try again. Uh, look up wizard. Um, look up from table questions, question ID. Huh. That is spooky. <laughs> Freaking me out. But anyway, it's, not, it's not the end of the world for now, but uh, that really should work. Um, so now we'll just have, uh, the reason why I do this is um, is when I now fill in my questions, I can literally go answer, uh, let's say, uh, the yuxk. That is correct as false. Question fk would be 1. Um, obviously, if it, if it had the question name there, which wasn't popping up, I could then you could display that, but you'd always want to store the primary key anyway. Um, Remember, the primary key is what you, you want to work with. You don't want to store the answer. You want to store the primary key to the question. You want to store the question, the text question. You want to store the ID. So you need to at least show the ID, and you can then display the thing. But as long as the ID is stored. Anyway, I'm moving on. Uh, so Yuxke, Nile, which is then the correct answer. So you would tick that. You then have... Um, that's on point. <laughs> uh, you then have... Uh, Orange River, and then I actually don't know how many rivers. <laughs> Anybody else? One more. One more. Crocodile. Crocodile, yes. Crocodile, well done. Uh, what did you say, Mitchell? I wouldn't even know how to spell that. Uh, anyway, so now, so you've got those answers, and I'm going to pause the video and just enter in one more question just because. Yeah, we at least have two examples to work from here at my health. Questions and four answers. So our database is set up. Now the next step, I'm actually going to be referring to another video to work with. When you create your class, so you're going to now start your project. We're going to create our Java application. We're going to call it a question and answer project. And when we do create this, we're not going to create a main class, but we're going to choose the location so that you guys can find it. Let me pause the video because I don't need it. First thing you do now is you would refer to the video. I'm going to put the video down in the comment section below. I've, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so I'll put this, the, the link to the other video that will explain how to connect to a database. Uh, I'm just going to connect to a database uh, from there. But basically, the connecting to the database, you guys would ha have an X a link to the database connection. And, and here you want to just create the connection to there. Um, I'm going to pause this video, you watch that video, I'm just going to refer to it now. So now this is going to continue the video, so we've got our storage connection working from the other video. It's there, that's done. We now need to actually work with our manager. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a Java class, and that Java class that, we <laughs> uh, that, Java class that we're going to create is answer. So we're going to create our answer first here, and our answer, all our answer class is going to store is it's going to have a private string answer, so what will be displayed. If you have an image, um, you would have a private string image, you'd have maybe some other things, but in this case I'm not going to do that, we're just keeping it simple. We're going to say private boolean correct. So this will literally store whether this answer is correct or it's not correct. And here we would then just create our constructors, our setters and getters for all of the fields. Sweet. We might even want to create a toString, and our toString actually should only just return the answer. So maybe what you want to do is you might want to make your two string a little bit different. You might want to say character uh, uh, display character, so if it was option A, B, C, D, or whatever, and then you would return display, and then technically uh, this is not overriding, so I can delete the override instruction because it's no longer is. Uh, display plus full colon space plus answer. 
So now that would display, for example, A full colon the answer, B full colon the answer. Depending on how you want to do that, that's your business. But just argument's sake. Anyway, um, now we're going to create another class, and the other class that we're going to create is going to be our question class. Okay. Now our question class, the first thing that it's going to have is obviously going to have the private string question, right? Do you guys get that? Now in the string question, uh, let's just use small q because it's a field, um, you would also have a private answer array is equal to new answer array size 4. Do you guys follow? And then here I would, um, oh, I haven't given a name, answers, so you would store that here, and then I will create a constructor which would receive the question through. Now you can, now this is, this is interesting, you can choose when you query the database for something. But now, I've got the question, right? But if I want to query, what do we store here? We do, do we store the question? No, we store the question ID. Because this, this is question FK is the field, but the, we don't store the actual question, we store the ID. So, when we want to retrieve the answers, what do we need? We need the So technically here I might as well also store, just in case we need it in future, um, the question ID as well. Do you guys get that? If this dot question ID is equal to this dot question ID, <laughs> that's very useful. Alright, so then we would do that. And now we would need to actually populate the answers. Now we want to populate the answers randomly. We want them in random order, don't we? Want them A, B, C, or whatever. Um, so, what I'm going to do is the following. Firstly, I'm going to go to my um, code segments, and I'm going to copy. Here, there's a thing called random.txt, and there's an int.getRandom. Now, I'm going to put this inside my main manager class. So, for example, I can put this in. Uh, you can actually put this wherever, uh, but for now, I'm just going to put it in here. Um, and this will then generate a random number between whatever the min is sent and the max is sent. Do you guys get that? Now, how would we randomly order these questions? First, first, let's just get how would we retrieve these questions. I'll get to the random just now. Let's just get how we're going to retrieve these questions. So, we are going to create a SQL statement. Now, this SQL statement would be equals select. Right, so we want to select the answers from this table, right? So select answer. We also potentially might want to keep track of the answer ID, but I, I don't foresee why we would need the answer ID actually. So let's just go select, uh, what was it? Answer from, what's the table called? Answers. And also what do we need? We need the correct as well, don't we? You guys get that? What else do we need from there? Do we need the category? Oh no, category is the question thing, so we don't need that there. So technically, here we would also have um, private and level. I'm going to go back to the levels because there's two options that you have a choice on yours to do. One, you could only load the questions of the level you're on currently, so it would always be that level and category you're on. Or two, you could store it in the array and you could filter it out then from the array. Your guys' choice when you want to load the question you want to load. Do you want to load only for the level you're currently on, or do you want to load for everything, but then group them by level? So your guys' choice, but I, I'm going to work with actually only loading the level that I'm currently on. Do you guys get that? Now, on here, we're going to say answers where, um, where, what, where question fk is equal to question id. You guys get that? That SQL statement would run that. So far, you're good, right? Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to say we're going to have to run. So we're going to create a result set. This is with working with databasing, which is, is quite new to you. Result set result. And this works very similarly to the way text files work. is equal to um, storage manager. Now, we, we haven't created an instance of our storage manager yet. So we need to create an instance of our storage manager, don't we? Now, You've got different ways that you want to work with this. 
I think the following is a better option. Let me just put, okay, to explain this, I've got a choice of when I load the information from the storage manager, right? So it means that I have to initialize the storage manager, initialize the communication with the database at any given stage. So what I can do is I can either initialize it when I need it, the instance of the storage manager, or I can have an instance running in the background all the time where there's a connection to the storage manager. Do you guys get that? So you can work with either way. I, I, I don't, there's probably when you get to university you can query which way is the better way on, on which one's more effective if you want to leave a connection open and only work with that one connection or if you want to close a connection each time and then work with it from that each time your guys choice in this example I am going to uh, create a manager class and I'm going to open up the connection and work from one connection just to make my life easier um, I'm going to go create Java class and I'm going to call this my um, question my, I'm just going to call it manager because it's my manager class okay and in the manager class I'm going to do a couple of things. One, this is where I'm going to put the the random method. Because it's static, I can refer to it anywhere. Do you guys get that? Static means I do not have to have an instance of it. So not only are we going to create that static, we're also going to create our public, if you want to make it private, connection, sorry, private uh, storage manager, ST man semicolon and I'm going to make this static as well. Static means means that it can be referable without having to create an instance of it. It's, it, it, it exists throughout there. Does that kind of make sense? But now you will in your constructor you would need to initialize your storage manager. So now I can go ST man dot equals new storage manager database name and what is our database name Q&A dot ACCDB so Q&A dot ACCDB so inside uh, this I'll put the Q&A dot ACCDB do you guys get that? You might want to also receive that through as a string here. Your guys' choice. String uh, storage name. All right. Now this is going to be read underlined. Why? Because the exception has been thrown and it hasn't been handed. So what do you do? Throw it on. Okay. Now storage manager unreported exception has been thrown. Now it says, it says another one, this is the SQL one, so there's two different exceptions, so I need to throw both of them, so I've thrown both of them now, and now the method is okay. So we're sweet, but now in my question, what I can do is I can go now, uh, result, result set, result is equal to, uh, oh, sorry, manager dot st, oh, hey, why? Because this is private, I can't access it, can I? So what do I do? I create a getter for stman. Do you guys follow? So dot get stman dot <coughs> query SQL. That will then return the result set of all the results we've got. So now, when you make something static, it means you can refer to it outside of there. There's an area here, and the area unreported exception. So we throw it. Now remember, I'm going to have to deal with these at some stage, but I'm choosing not to deal with it now. Why? Because I want to deal with it in the user interface. So that I can make a message to the programmer and I can make a message, a detailed message to the user as well. Okay, so now I want to loop through my, so like with uh, the text files, we loop through, so we go result, but now we do instead of dot has next, we do dot next, which means it's looking if there is a next record and it will move it to the next record. We then want to get the answer so basically we would go string answer is equal to um, result dot get string. Now here is also a difference. We want to get the answer record. Do you guys get that? So it's as easy as that. You literally say string answers equal to result dot get string. I want to refer to this field. So you refer to the field name there. And I realized I'm not zoomed in for the video. My bad. Anyway, the next thing we want is the correct. So 
boolean correct now this is the one i'm a bit unsure of if, if we can actually do this dot get boolean answer and i assume a yes no field is the same as a as a another field as a, as a, as a yes no is the same as a boolean so we'll check if it is the case we'll see i haven't tried this for a long time so we'll see if that works or not but that's a later problem so so far do you guys understand that when I receive the question, this will then populate, well, so far we've got the answer, then we would go, uh, oops, I forgot about something. I forgot to create my counter. So I then go, answers, position, num answers. You guys remember this from arrays, right? is equal to new answers and you're then going to say answer and correct we're then going to go num answers plus plus so this is going to populate my answers with that you guys good next step is what next step is we've populated the answers but now we need to actually populate our questions so uh, we go to our manager our manager is going to now have an array of so array of question array you guys follow and then I'll be um, uh, we're going to have question array uh, questions is equal to new question array and we're going to say size 500 or whatever large and then private int uh, num questions semicolon you guys follow now what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to create a method public void populate questions okay now I want to populate questions based on a level so I'm going to create a private int level that we're currently on you could also potentially have a private string category that we're on. I'm only going to work with level, I'm not going to work with category. Um, I just put the category in the database example just to show you you could use any of these sort of things to, to work with it. And we are only going to populate according to that. So the first thing is I'm going to set num questions to equal zero here. The reason why is when you progress to level two, you want to reload all the questions. So I don't technically need to delete all the other ones, I can just literally go back to zero and then repopulate for uh, whichever next level we're on. So I'm basically saying, ignore all the ones that are there, we're starting from zero again, we now populate into level two. So when you get to level three, ignore all the ones that are there, start from position zero again, go from level, uh, reload the questions. We're good so far, right? Okay, so now I'm going to go from num questions, we're going to say, um, we're going to create our SQL. Now, how would our SQL look in this? We'll go select, what fields do we need? We need the question ID, right? We need the question, actual question, which I call it stupidly, but yeah, I'll rename the fields now because I hate the way, way I name them. We will need the level. Actually, do we need the level? We just need to go from questions, the questions table, where uh, level is equal to plus level. Would that SQL statement make sense? Sorry about that, I got distracted. Um, well, the computer got a bit sidetracked. So I'm saying select question ID, comma question from questions where level is oh your where level is equal to level. You guys good with that? You might also want to get the image here, you might want to get other fields, but for now we're just gonna get this because this is all that this one specifically requires. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, let's execute that. So we go result set, result is equal to um stman dot query and we are going to run the query sql let me rename my database uh, uh things quickly i'll pause the video continue now uh, with the coding now that i've named them properly uh the sql here why does this throw an error because it's saying that there's an unreported exception so what do i do i throw it you guys follow i do the same thing now i go while now remember, we, we a while ago created a method, and you guys perhaps prefer doing this. If we go public void add question, we receive through string question, comma, int uh, question ID. We would then go and we would go uh, questions, position, num questions. We, we do this a lot, don't we? 
is equal to new. So what we you learn for tests and exams, it also helps here, doesn't it? It's the exact same thing. So we've got num questions plus plus semicolon. Why is this throwing an error? Because it throws an exception. Because remember, new question reads from the database, doesn't it? And we'll throw an exception. So what do we do? Throw an exception. <laughs> so literally we're going, throw it, throw it, throw it. So literally, uh, this method will call this method, which will throw a method exception, which would call another method, which throws an exception. So it goes kind of crazy. So basically, the exception will be thrown through three different methods. Anyway, so we go while results.next. And we say, OK, uh, string, so int uh, question ID is equal to result dot get, sorry, dot next, no, dot get uh, int. And we will then say um, uh, question ID. So far, we're good. String question is equal to result dot get string um, question semicolon. I would then go and I would run my add question. Done. You guys good? Now, right now, this is fine. This would work. You haven't created a constructor for this method, so let me create a constructor for this. Oh, no, I did, because I, I must have created a constructor. Here it is with the file name. Equals new storage manager, and that initializes that. Um, when you use the constructor, we can set level. So level is equal to 1. So we start off with level 1. Do you guys get that? Um, I would then uh, num questions to be equal to 0. Num questions is equal to 0. So technically, we would do that anyway later. So I actually don't need to do that. Um, the only other thing we would need to initialize right now is because it's level 1, we will need to then run the populate questions method. Do you guys get that? Now we would create another method that would be a public void increase level, right? Which will go level plus plus and then repopulate questions. Okay, so that's how my levels work. Sweet, you guys could do that? So every single time I increase the level, I repopulate my question. Now again, unreported exception. So what do we do with our exception? Throw it. We throw it. So now, one thing we haven't done, what about actually showing the users the questions? Now we have to retrieve it. So let's take a look firstly at answer. So we've got a two string for answer, but we have to receive a character. Now, this didn't randomly populate the, the answers, did it? Didn't it? It populated them in order to what they were there. So how would we, now I'm going to create a method called randomize. Or let me, do you want me to get it working in normal order, then do the randomize afterwards? I think that's a better structure of doing it. Okay, I'll do the randomizing it later. It's just in a specific order. And in which case, I'm also going to get rid of this, um, on the answer side, this character display thing, because quite frankly, if it's going in order, it doesn't really matter. I'll work on that a bit later. That's kind of a little fidgety stuff that we can work with later. So we get answer. But now, if we want to display our question, uh, First of all, we could either create a method called public string get. I'm going to do it this way. And you guys can think about this in your planning. You think about this. In my two string, I'm going to return the question, right? And I'm going to have to destroy a string displaying all possible answers. So, what I would do myself is I could go and say, okay, um, I would say for our tab, we need that character there, don't we? So the user has buttons at the bottom to press A, B, C, or D. So we do need that character. Okay. Um, Sorry, I was just thinking I'm making my life more difficult. I apologize about this. I'm kind of solving it as we go along. All right. So for our answer, we do need a uh, R and a bit letter. Okay. Unexpected O letter. My bad. Uh, do you get where I went wrong there? Yeah. It's just me being stupid. All right. Now, um, if I go back to my manager class, uh, sorry, my yeah, my manager class, 
we're doing the no we did not we sorry when the questions to get the two string working here bear with me on this string letters is equal to a b c d because we know it's going to be maximum of four isn't it so we good with that so now what i can do is i can go uh answers plus equals append right um answers oh no My naming was two things of the same name, which is not good. Answers position i dot two string uh, letters dot character at i. That's quite clever, isn't it? Because what am I doing? As I'm sending through a the first time, b the second time, c the first time, so it will display a b c d. And we then want to display a backslash n at the end, so we'll put each letter opposite on the new line. So now what we want to display here is we would want to display question plus backslash n backslash n plus uh, display. So we'll display the question, enter, enter, then the possible answers. Do you guys get that? Now, on here, answer, well, let's go back to, uh, sorry, our manager. Our manager, this is where the random comes into it. We've got the get random here. Is I now want to go public string get question. Okay. Actually, I'm going to go one further. I'm going to say public. Yeah, let's go string get question. And I'm going to also go up here. And I'm going to go and say private question current question no let's 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 do it the other way around I like it let's just go question current so that's the question that we're currently asking the user because remember if we choose level two or level three there's five questions that might be choosing from you guys kind of get that now what I can do is I can firstly go current question is equal to question position get random from position zero to num questions minus one so that will make the current question equal to the The position in the array which is randomly chosen. So if there were five different options, it would choose randomly between zero and five. But the, sorry, if there were zero and four. Or if you've got a hundred, it would choose between us. So then what I'll do is I'll return current question dot two string. And that would return the string representation of the current question. Do you guys get that? Now um we now want to create our user interface. This here will get me the questions. And now, if I want to check an answer, if its answer is correct, so now the user answers, that's the next thing we do, don't we? We need to make a working code that will be able to check whether the user answered correctly. So, public void answer. And here, we would have a, we would receive through char answer, which will receive through the answer that the user answered, the answer the user answered. <laughs> Okay, um, now we would then have to go and say if we're going to return boolean here. So if and now we have to compare whether what the user answered was correct to what the actual answer was. So we go to back to my question. My question: I need to do a method called public boolean is correct open brackets chr letter you guys follow now I'm gonna go a bit further I'm gonna say do the exact same thing here
mind blown. Okay. If it was A, and the user answered A, it would return 0, right? So Z in the position. In my array, when I populated my array, I used, um, when I was displaying my array to the, to the user, I displayed position 0 as A. I played displayed position 1, so you guys get that the letters corresponds, corresponds to the position in the array that that is. Do you guys get that? Okay, so here I'm just using answers as correct. So answer, are you a correct answer? Answers knows, doesn't it? The answer is stored when it read from the database whether it was correct or not, doesn't it? So it knows is correct. And that gets displayed back to question. Question then returns if it is correct to manager. Manager will just go if answer. So they'll go current question dot is correct. Choose letter answer. I could actually just directly return it, but if it is correct, also if it is incorrect, I would here I would return true. Here I would return false. Now in this case you might want to um, have other variables like private. private I, I'm just gonna. It's a bit stupid, but private int lives. I want to create one called lives, and I want to start the user on uh, lives equals to three. I'm going to create setters and getters for level and life. Okay. Now, on here. I'm going to, if the answer is true, I'm going to go level plus plus. Now it's very stupid to be asked one question and then go up a level, but <laughs> I mean, whatever. Uh, and then in this case, if you go false, you would go lives minus minus. So you have three chances to get it right, and you go up a level. Every single time you answer a question, you go up a level. What you could do is you could ask three questions before you go up a level. So you could, for example, have points. So then only when you get to 300 points do you go up, or then only when you get up to a certain level, you guys can work out that's your babies, as is I'm giving you quite a bit. But right now, I believe my working classes are designed to be able to do everything I do need. I've got it to be able to give me a random question and to populate the answers, and I've got that. Now, I need to get my GUI working, don't I? Now, we've only got uh, two minutes to get my GUI working. If you guys don't mind staying like two minutes into break, I can probably get the GUI working in that time. So it might be taking me for another five minutes. But JFrame, we're going to say here GUI. <coughs> we're going to create a new package called GUI. Or user interface, let's say. <coughs> so step one is after I initialize my components, I need to create an instance of my manager. So manager. <coughs> Yo. Okay, step one, I actually need to, um, whoa, hello. I need to zoom into it so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So we're going to say private. Uh, Manager, and we're gonna have to manager man semicolon, and we're gonna have to initialize. So man equals new manager, and we need to send through the text file name. In which case, this is q and a dot a c c d b. You guys get that? Now here is where we're gonna have to handle the exception because now I can display an error message to the user and to the thing. Yes, I'm gonna surround the block with a try catch, and here. We've got two different exceptions that can occur. So on the first exception, I mean, you can leave the log in there as well, but I'm going to go search, which we printed out to the programmer, um, error in GUI constructor, full colon, space, um, plus EX. I'm going to put this just, um, you could be more specific, the fact that the one's an SQL exception, the other one's a, um, a uh, class not found exception, you could be more specific on that, but you would also then show the user something, so you'd say uh, to the user, show message dialog, um, this, which means it will display on top of wherever this window might be, and then I'm going to say, um, <coughs> sorry for you, so you'd give a message to the user, and then you'd say plus uh, ex as well, so you'd display the error message, and then, so you'd make sure your error messages are handled, do you guys get that? Now, when we start off, we want to be level one, we want to be all of that, we want to update our display. So let's go design our GUI a little bit quickly. All we're going to do is I'm going to make my GUI look like this. I'm going to make, set this out, uh, just bear with me for a couple of moments. We're going to make this a board layout. I'm going to put a panel on the right, I'm going to put a panel at the bottom, and I'm going to put a panel on the center. <coughs> on the panel on the right, I want to display the level 
I want to display, then this will be the actual level below it. So this one I'm going to be editing via code. So I'm going to go edit text, uh, sorry not edit text, uh, edit name. Change variable name, um, actual level. Okay. Well, LBL level actually should be a better name for that, but whatever. LBL level, I'll probably see what is later. We then also want to display uh, lives. So edit text lives. And we're then going to put a label underneath it and change that variable name to LBL uh, lives. Uh, and then on the bottom here, cool, that's fine. Cheers, goodbye. You too. And here we're going to have button. This one we're going to uh, edit the text to say A. We're going to create another button. Uh, edit text B. We're going to create another button, edit text C, D. Eh, did I not change it? I think I didn't press enter or something. Okay, so C. Now, to change the layout of this, I can just go set layout, let's make it flow layout or grid layout, A, B, C, D. Here I want to display my, my actual what the users have got. So I'm going to make a text area, put it in here. I'm going to set this to be also grid layout. <coughs> I want to set this to not be enabled so the user can't edit it. Uh, done, I'm going to change the variable name of this to txt display. <coughs> so now, first thing we know is in our source is we want to populate the thing. So we want our LBL level to equal to um, man.get level. Right? Oh, yeah, I'm being needed. I'll be all dot set text to be a man dot get level plus. Yes, you understand it? I'll be all what was our own lives and um, dot set text to be man dot get lives plus inverted commas. So they'll populate those right, and we would want. To get a next question, because we're now on level one, so we're going to say here, um, LBL, uh, sorry, txt display dot set text to be um, man dot dot get question. Right, so that'll return the question that we want. Now the other thing that we'll need to do now is we'll need to do it when the user clicks A, B, C, D. So when the user clicks A, I'm going to create a method called a uh, I'm going to create the method up here quickly. I'm going to create a method called public void answer C H I R uh, letter. Okay, and I'm going to work with that method here. But when I click button, this button, I want to go answer, uh, enter, and I'm going to send through the character A. Do you guys get that? When the user clicks on B, I want to send through answer, and I want to send through the character B. When the user clicks on C, I'm going to click answer and I'm going to send through the character C. Yes, no? And then D, same thing, answer, open brackets, D. Oop. Cool. So that's that done. And then here we're going to run that answer. So now when we do the answer, first thing we're going to do is we're going to say uh, Boolean correct is equal to man dot answer letter right you guys get that if correct else what are we going to do so if it's correct the first thing that we know we're going to do is we're going to be updating our display to be um, update our display because it's going to get a new question isn't dot set text and we're going to get a new question so man dot get question so we're going to get a new question. So each time it's going to go up a level. The level happens in our manager. It doesn't happen here. After it's answered, the answer will determine whether it's correct or false. And here we would have updated it to a new question, wouldn't we? Because in my answer, if I remember correctly, I did say answer if current question is correct, true. No, we didn't. So we actually, but every time we need to get question, we get a random question. So it would choose a random question. But we have incremented the level here or decremented the lives. So it would either be on the same level and we'll just get another random question because this generates a random question. If you want, you could increment through the questions. I was just doing it randomly. Your guys' choice on that. Now in the GUI, uh, the next thing that we're going to have to do is if it is correct, we're going to have to update our level, isn't it? Because our level might have gone up. So we go dot set text is equal to um, man dot get level 
plus inverted commas. And um, what else do we need to do? That's about it. Um, but if it's the other way around, we need to update our <coughs> lives. <coughs> you do realize I haven't included anywhere in here something to deal with uh, deal with uh, when you get to zero lives, right? So let's just check firstly if I've got my database in there. Let's see if this works. I'll be very impressed if this works first time without me doing any checking because I literally did working code through the GUI which was a bit, uh, and I didn't do any GUI to test any of the steps. This is first time test. So I think I, I'm owed something like a bit of, uh, I don't know, it'll be epic. Okay, play. Run GUI. Okay. <laughs> Warning. Unable to connect to AC. User lacks privilege or object not found level. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so you can access this as an SQL exception, user lacks pre preference. I'm going to uh, pause this video and I'll finish this at a later stage on my own. Um, the reason why all of this is fully coded, I just believe that there's obviously a, a, a you can access constructor error. So it's actually an error in the database connection, which I don't blame myself. <laughs> um, uh, we'll take a look at why there's an error in the, the you can access and I'll figure that out. Okay, one of the problems were uh, L, this was a small L and I think it's a capital L inside the program, so let's just check if that was the issue. Oops, still error, error in construction, uh, object not found level, uh, privilege from an object, I guess. So it's obviously something to do with that. I'm off for the trial. Now, I've got a sad feeling it might have something to do with um, Google Drive and the way that the security settings are working there. Because I'm in the Google Share at the moment and my folders are just gone. Um, but when I went through the other example, it's there. So I'm very confused of where this thing's gone, but um, if I just paste this into here, I don't have the folder location anymore, but if I go and I take this in, properties, and I... Sorry, I apologize about taking time on this, but if I copy this through and I send this through as the drive here, which I'll be enter, it takes me through to the project, and here's question answer under the grade 12 pad, and uh, C drive, so forth. So, D drive, Google Share, IT Share, IT General Resources, blah, blah, blah. And yet in here, D drive, Google Drive, Google Share, IT Resources, blah, blah, blah. It's the same drive folder, but it must be different. Google Drive, okay, it's just directly IT Share, not here. This is under Google Share. So, Google Drive went under Google Share, okay. There we go, that's where the issue is coming in there. Never mind. Alright, uh, um, so there's two folder structures with the same stuff, that's a bit annoying. Yeah, so I'll uh, look further into the problem then. Perhaps that's not where it originates from. Uh, one thing further, I actually separated the errors, so class not found exception I did here, and then the error in GUI constructor. So it actually came up as being the error from the SQL exception. So it looks like someone is trying to run something. So now it's uh, my next step in trying to problem solve is I want to check the different sections, whether it's actually the, um, in my manager class, whether it's just the initializing, initializing the storage manager or whether it gets to the populate questions part. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go sir, no, maybe a south in this case. I'm going to print out over here saying now to populate questions and then after I populate questions, write that just to see if it occurs when it's trying to populate the questions or whether when it occurs when it's trying to um, pop just uh, connect to the database. So I was assuming it's connecting to the database because of the security level issue, but it might be somewhere else. So let's just double check here now to check uh, questions populated. So just so we can get more of a justification of where the error is at. Okay, so that was the error, but now you'll see that there's a different error that's popped up. It's now saying cannot find question ID. So that means that now literally uh, there's just another error with regards to me not doing the correct thing. So question ID is now probably being explained from the answer. So it's here. Question class, manager class. Yeah, so the question class look for question ID. So if I look at my database again, I'll probably just question underscore ID. So I hadn't renamed it, so let's just rename this to you. <laughs> my naming convention should always be the same. Okay, 
Okay, so let's uh, make sure what I've asked here is what I've asked there. So let's run that again. So just uh, literally naming of fields I was not being consistent with. Um, <laughs> and I was spent a while trying to look for stupid other errors occurring in there. And now if we look at this, it comes up with the first question. So we're on level one, lives three. So if I now say the latest river, if I get this wrong, it will, uh, let's, uh, let's get this right, so B. Okay, I progressed to question two, but it hasn't refreshed the question here. So that's the next question. Uh, so lives two, if I said B again, level three, level four, then it leaves the question. So the questions aren't getting populated. So let's take a look at that while the new question isn't coming up. So let's go to my answer. Ah, so when I answer, I never actually repopulate the question. That's very stupid. So let's go here and say, um, uh, next question. I next question this. So instead of answer Boolean, Okay, so it returns boolean. I just haven't actually coded it to move on to the next question. So if I go into my GUI now, so let's go into the GUI, GUI. Now this actually returns, yeah, answer if correct. Do this dot get question. Huh. I thought it would then. And the level display, maybe I should actually just display a message as well. Show message dialog. Um, this comma. Okay, well, give me SLZ. Show message dialog. Uh, this comma. Well done. Correct. Now, oh, I must keep going. Uh, but basically, we've, we've solved the error. We now just need to get it so that it would work. So that uh, and just write boo. But now the get question isn't changing the question to the new level. So when I go get question, it says questions. The first thing I actually should do is repopulate the question. When I go get questions, I should, because when the level changes, I should repopulate. Because remember, as soon as the level increases, I should. So here we increase the level. When the level increases, we should repopulate our questions. And there was only one question in that possible thing. So populate questions, and then the level, why is it giving O? Because that needs, it throws an exception. So here I'd have to throw an SQL exception. And that means that in my GUI, I would have to make sure that this is hand handled. So I'd say uh, surround block with try catch, and I'd make sure that an error message was shown to the programmer and to the user. So sir, error in uh, an answer. Yeah. And then one for the user as well. Um, I'm just going to make doing the same thing from out of laziness, but now it should actually increase levels, and when the increased levels are happening, it will then change between the pool and which questions it's going. Technically, if it was the same level and I had more than one question, it would have actually displayed different questions. If I said B, well done, correct, it's level 2, it now goes through to the next question. And then if I go um, now uh, C, well done, correct answer. And then in American football, if I got this completely wrong and I said feet are great, so I went D, it'll come up there saying boo, and then it'll ask me a random question. Now, technically, um, there's now two different options, so it should randomly choose the other one at some point. But yeah, as far as the random is concerned, and more than lives are negative zero, we'll worry about that at later stage. Oh, there we go. So you check, it will randomly choose a different question within the pool, but because I've got so little questions in there, it won't order, but it'll get from the different levels. So that's this uh, question and answer thing working. Obviously, I don't have many questions in there, so it doesn't look very great. But that's an example of how to do a question and answer and have proper um, structures in place to do it. Enjoy your day. Bye.